it's not hard to see the appeal of cladding systems like stucco, which are basically liquid-based and flow, or at least smush, their way into tricky nooks and around complicated profiles. Like this classic head casing profile above a door in Minnesota. But that's only where the challenge begins on this particular piece of bevel siding. It needs to fit between two vertical trims, over a door, and under a cantilevered bump out. Oh yeah, and the top of the door casing slants at each end. The notching process begins with a full bucket of patience. Step two is to draw a map of the terrain to be covered. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it does have to be accurate. One critical piece of accuracy is double checking things. Another is having an intelligent system of operations, like pulling numbers from the same place for the whole workpiece, scribing both sides of an obstruction, and drawing known spots for reference. Of course, a lovely flat work surface is helpful too, but you know, it's a job site. Transfer the numbers to the siding piece and double check things as you go. The thing about complicated pieces like this one is that every step gets you closer to the finished product and adds more to lose if you make a mistake. Working left to right, Saul transfers the measurements to the siding and then working right to left, he draws in the main edges. After double checking to make sure where he ends is where he thinks he's gonna end, Saul strolls back to the workpiece to draw the cutouts between the reference marks. A section is cut from the top of the siding for the bump out and a section is cut out of the bottom of the piece to notch over the door. If he had a flat work table, he'd probably use a chalk line to snap this, but instead he draws it with a straight edge and a sharp pencil. Did I mention how much we all love classic molding profiles? Saul scribes the profile after aligning it with his reference mark and then he cuts it out with a jigsaw. This works out okay, but he opts for a coping saw on the second side. With the profiles at the ends of the doors cut, he rips the section down to width using a circular saw. Now it starts getting dicey. There's a lot of work invested in this piece and there's still a bit of work to do. If it breaks while moving it around, it means going back to square one or two-piecing the siding in this instance. At the chop saw, he cuts the vertical edges of all the notches, tilting the workpiece to flatten the blade's curve at the ends of the notches. He finishes the notch cut with a utility knife, cleaning up the cut so they'll fit tightly. It's not a bad idea to back bevel these cuts slightly to make sure that the face fits snugly. Similarly, he cuts the edges of those tricky profiles and then he cleans up those edges with a bit of sandpaper. Now it's time for a test fit. To see how close this comes to perfection, they walk over and slip it into place. Again, the cost of breaking the workpiece at this point is orders of magnitude greater than the cost of it breaking earlier in the process. Sitting in place, it looks like the edges of the head casing need to be adjusted slightly. Other than that, it seems to fit. Saul eases the edges with a mini belt sander. Saul previously skipped that last long cut, the top of the head casing, which slopes down. So now he makes that cut with a circular saw and cleans up the edges with a multi-tool. Now they're ready to plop it back into place. It seems to fit after a little gentle nudging, and it's time to nail it off. The wide parts of the siding can be nailed with a regular coil nailer. The skinny part over the door will be nailed carefully with a finish nailer. And that's all there is to notching like a boss. Take your time, measure carefully, make a map, and double check your numbers before cutting up that workpiece.